everybody it is Malik again and I've had a couple of people ask me about um, doing some challenges on Hellbound Hackers uh, so I created an account on it you know, I'm still working on a couple on on hackthesite.org namely forensics number three which is brutally hard uh, a couple more still to do in hack this um, but Again, they've asked me about this one, uh, which are affiliates with hackthesite.org. So I thought I'd jump in and take a look at them. I went through a couple just to see what they had. And, and uh, if you've been following the channel, you're going to see a lot of repetition. But you know, some of them are, are slightly different. So it, it's, it's kind of neat to run through as many of these as you can. Um, so we're going to do a couple of these today. Uh, the first few, I am in the basic web hacking. There are 29 of them. Um, so we're going to kind of start right at the beginning. Uh, so again, if, uh, if you, know, you like the channel, please, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to it. Hit the notification bell so you can get notifications when I, uh, I post stuff. Um, uh, there is a donations link there if you feel so inclined. Um, we're getting very close to a thousand subscribers, which uh, I'm very, very happy with. Um, and again, post in the comments uh, if there's anything that, that you guys want to see, any topics you want me to cover, and I can usually pull together some sort of a, some sort of video on that to to help you out. But we're going to start with this one, and. Uh, truthfully, this is a whole lot like hackthesite.org and um, hack this first challenge, uh, where you just drop to a page to enter a password and nothing else. So we have no information here. Well, again, still one of your best things to do is you don't want to waste a bunch of time. Try to get through and see if you can get through without it. Well, no, there's a particular password we gotta have, so that ain't it. So where else would we go to possibly find a password? And we want to start with the easiest stuff first. Before we start worrying about directory transversals and all that type of stuff, you take a look at the easiest stuff first. So we're going to do just that. Remember, just right click and take a look at the page source. Now I've zoomed in. And, and there's a lot of stuff here to make your life earlier, easier, earlier, excuse me about that, to make your life easier, just do a search for pass or password. That will jump you to the line where they told us to enter the password. And here we have a division. We have a comment, when you pet me I purr. And then the place to enter the password. Huh. Well. What is that? Okay, so they didn't come straight out and give us a password. They gave us a pretty major password hint though. So, when you pet me, I purr. Hmm. How about cat? C-A-T. Submit. And, well, mine says sorry you already beat this, but that should have gotten you through and should have gotten you, I think, five points. Okay. So pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at hacking too. Well, my friend Drake had began to program in HTML. He made this iframe, but the host of the website has kicked him out, and he doesn't remember where this iframe reading it from. Where is this iframe reading it from? <laughs> Please email him where the iframe is reading from here. Okay. 
So if you don't understand iframes, it's definitely worth taking a look at. So I would do some searching on, on iframes, um, just for some general knowledge. Uh, but an iframe is basically uh, another page inside of a page. So that page technically doesn't live here. Um, it's just brought in and shown inside of a, um, a uh, division. So we want to see basically just where the source of this iframe is. So again, how do we view the source of the page that we're looking at? Well, we view the source. And I'll zoom in some so you guys can see it. And again, to make life easier, I'm just going to search for iframe. So here's the line here where we saw it. My friend Drake has begun to program in HTML. He made this iframe. Um, you know, but the host of the website doesn't remember where it's reading from. Yada yada. Here's the iframe border. There's no border. Height is 250 pixels height. Width is 500. It's a line center. He called it content source. That's where it's coming from. It's coming from basic basic one in a folder called B2. It's the index.php page. So why don't we just copy that? So I'm going to copy that link location. Go back. Paste it there. Submit it. And again, I've already beaten that one, but it's so two very, very straightforward ones. Taking a look at the page source, and that is going to get you through a lot of stuff. So, let's do a couple more. <clears throat> All right. So we have now Drake learned, <clears throat> excuse me, how to make HTTP user agents with PHP. And we get a warning that wrong user agent, BWH3 underscore user underscore agent wasn't found. Again, definitely do some research on user agents and why people use user agents in the first place. Mainly they use them to, to either block content from particular browsers or from mobiles or from uh, desktops when they're just mobile. There are multiple reasons to use particular types of agents. If you don't meet the criteria they want you to meet, then the page isn't going to load. But again, sometimes it's used to keep you out of content. And what if you want to get in that content? So this is where you can do a little bit of research on how to switch user agents. And I'll tell you, the easiest ones to switch user agents on are either Firefox or Chrome. I use Firefox for all of my attacking of web servers because they've got so many add-ons that, that I can use. But if you like Chrome, go with Chrome. Um, just do some research on how to switch user agents and see if you can get by this thing. They gave us the name of the user agent. It's BWH3 underscore user underscore agent. That's what they're looking for but we don't have that. So how do we get it? So just a little bit of research on the user agent. I'll give you a little pause here and uh, see if you can figure it out. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm in Firefox. I actually have a user, a user agent switcher uh, that's just an add-on for Firefox. Now, I'm going to pick a desktop browser. I'm going to say Firefox. I'm going to say Windows is my operating system. But I'm going to hit this little edit button right here. And you see it says this is the user agent string. And right now it says secure user agent. Well that's not what they want. They want BWH3 user agent. So I'm going to copy that. And paste it in here. See if it pasted. Oops, didn't paste. You're not, you're not pasting. I'll make you paste. BWH3. BWH3. I'm going to do an OK. And down here, oh, crud, I can't find it. I'm going to refresh the page. Yeah. And let me make sure it holds it. No, it didn't. Because I wasn't able to copy it. BWH3 underscore user underscore agent. Say OK. Do a refresh. And it let me through. So with that, you're able to get to pages that you typically can't get to. Um, or that they're blocking out simply by a user agent. All right, great job. So let's take a look at one more here. Actually, we'll take a look at two more. We'll get one through five. Uh, we'll do this one. We'll do this one. Okay, so we got basic challenge four. The htpassword.php file is not found in basic four. So we got an error message here. Apparently, they are validating our password that we type in with this file. Okay. Now, truthfully, that should be a breeze to get by. If you don't have a validation file, sometimes we can just submit. But it's still trying to be validated. So we have to find this file. Well, we know it's not in basic four, where it should be. Okay, so this is the page that we're looking for. This is htpassword.php. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this up here and paste it at the very end. Now, I'm going to do this for you just to make life a little bit easier for you. I think that's a little bit too big. There we go. So that's what I have. Well, we know this file is not here. So there's really no need to look for it right there. So what if we change basic four to basic three? Just change the four to a three. Hit enter. Nope, not there. How about two? Nope, not there. One? Nope, not there. So we gotta find this thing. And, yeah, really, this is just a trial and error thing. Um, let's see, we did four, so how about five? Uh-oh. Your password is Firebird. So, I'm going to go back to basic four. Oops, get rid of this.
and I'm going to type in Firebird and submit it. And we got through that one. That is nothing but directory transversal. Okay, so that's the first four. So what we're going to do when we come back is we're going to do 5 through 10. Um, but I'll bring one up here and I'll kind of point you in a place here to see what we got. Uh, we have um, Asterisk Protect is an email search system that uses this new type of Asterisk database to match your search and uses the same type of form like a logon. Asterisk Protect uh, it, it's a login system which also uses this advanced type asterisk database to match your username colon password. This is a project that just started. If something is wrong or you found a bug in our product, please contact us at problems at asterisk So we have to enter a username colon password and submit, search an email and submit. So they tell you it's a search system to match your search, much like a login page. Okay, so it matches your username, password, and it's a new project. So again, do all the stuff that we've already done. Take a look at the source code to try to understand what these fields are doing, how they're linked together, what the submit button actually does. Um, and when I get back later tonight, we are going to uh, jump through eh, probably five, six, and seven. All right. So that's the first four. There's a bunch of challenges here. I started looking through. Again, there's 29 basic challenges. Um, uh, Lots of application ones where it let the light bust in zip files. In fact, uh, there's some executables inside of here where we got to find passwords. Um, and they go from easy to moderate um, to hard. Um, and I love that one down here. There's a um, there's an unknown difficulty. Uh, we have um, some JavaScript stuff. We do have some really cool realistic ones. I haven't done any of these, but I kind of just scanned through them. Um, right, many realistic ones actually. Uh, actually, more than hackthesite.org. There's actually 18 of them. Um, so we can spend plenty of time inside of those. Um, we do have some rooting ones, which probably won't be doing much of those, but we, will, we do have uh, a pen testing one. Um, I haven't been into it. Ah, it takes you to a whole new uh, full site challenge. Um, of course, this is going to be a much longer one uh, when you get into the pen testing challenges. And there are some time ones, but they're mostly programming. We do have some on encryption. which I think are really cool. Definitely want to hit those. We have some on logicals. And then we even have some stegos. So a lot of things to do here. So we may be jumping around. We may not do all the basic web ones in a row and then hit app and then you know, yada yada. We may kind of jump around and do them. But Hang around. We'll have all these things covered. See how long it takes us. See which ones we get stuck on. Um, but until next time, remember subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. And uh, let me know if you guys want to see anything. I'll be more than happy to put it out there for you. Alright. Until next time, my friends. This is Malik.